All right guys, the time has finally come. We have completed the F12 engine and it is ready to go into the car right now. For the final time, this thing should be running very soon. But to get that to happen, we need to drop this thing in the car and bolt it all in place. We've got my wiring guy who's gonna come down and finish up all the wiring on it so we can get all the electronics in place and hopefully everything will go off without a hitch and we can get the tuner over here and we can fire this thing up. So let's get started. So we've got pretty much everything ready on the chassis for the engine. We've got the fuel pressure regulator in place, the fuel feed lines, the brake lines are fastened down to the chassis. We've got the steering shaft in, the subframe is in, oil tank is in, the breather tank. Basically everything surrounding the engine is there, it's bolted down, and it's ready to go. So we're gonna drop the engine in, tighten down the motor mounts, put the transmission mount in, we can hook up the shift linkage, and start putting that crazy exhaust system that we made on this thing. And uh, man, I'm so excited that this car is finally coming together, and it's gonna be running soon. Well, luckily we don't have to do this too many more times, hopefully. Should be the last time we have to do this, so. No more in and out with this thing, banging it up. We have put this engine in the car quite a few times. It wasn't complete, it was basically just the block and the head sitting on top. No crank, no pistons, no rods, no oil pump. All the accessories weren't on it. It's actually going in the car now. We have the clutch, the four plate tilt and clutch, and flywheel bolted up, the bell housing, the Samsona sequential transmission. It's Man, it, it is looking like a complete engine. Once we get that intake manifold and the exhaust manifold on it, it's really gonna look good. All right, Tim, let's bring it in. All right, go up a little more. Ooh, just clears that, that water outlet there. You can go up another half an inch or so. One more little bump, okay. Now we need to get the uh, jack underneath the transmission. Because right now it's angled like this, so we gotta get it leveled out. That's going to uh, clear this water line. It'll be below there, and uh, then we can actually shift the engine slightly forward because we're a bit too far back at the moment to get past here. And if we need to, we can pull the steering rack out. This is the first time that the engine has gone in with the steering rack in its new position. So I measured everything before and it looked like it was gonna clear. So hopefully it does. Okay, go ahead and go up a little more. How's that? Yeah, keep going. Going. Looks pretty level in here, I think. Oh yeah, they're lining up. Yeah, all right, so yeah, there we go. Engine mounts are just about lined up. That was uh, really close, but uh, that's what I figured it would be. Nice and tight right there. So we will have to pull the steering rack out, I think, because we have to uh, do a final torque on that. But that's gonna be a lot easier to do when it's in the car. Because when it was on the engine stand, trying to put hundreds of pounds of torque on that bolt, the thing just kind of wanted to tip over. But once it's in the chassis, solid mounts, everything is gonna be in place and that's gonna be much easier to torque. These engine mounts are different left and right and uh, we didn't mark them, but we got them on backwards. So this is actually the passenger side mount and it's just slightly offset by about three quarters of an inch back. So we lined up the transmission mount, everything needs to move back, which means we're gonna have more clearance in the front, which is what I thought because I felt like there was more clearance when I was measuring everything. And uh, luckily, yes, the engine's gonna move back, but I just gotta swap these mounts from side to side and uh, we should be good to go. All right, so we got the motor mount swapped from left to right, so they're on the correct side now. Just got the bolts lined up there. So I'm just gonna spin them in a bit, but I'm not gonna tighten them yet. That way we have just a little bit of wiggle room from left to right and front to back. I mean, just a half a millimeter. That's gonna give Tim enough room to get the bolts started for the transmission mount. Yeah, it looks so much better now on the front pulley. When I was looking at it and measuring it, from where the steering rack was originally, which was up here, so stepped up 30 millimeters, and I think it was 65 millimeters that I moved it back. But when I took those measurements, I was like, oh yeah, I should have like a hands clearance in there, it should be fine. And then we were putting it in, I'm like, did I measure it wrong? What happened? No, it's just the motor mounts were swapped, so we're all good. 
All right. You finally get these chains off the engine, start putting all these other parts onto it. Engine is in, Tim's just gonna tighten down the last two bolts for the motor mount, and it's in there and it is solid and ready to go. All right, DD fam, I wanna interrupt this programming for a quick personal message, it's something I've not really shared with very many people and I'm about to share with you. When I was in my early 20s, I got into severe debt. It was awful, $68,000, I didn't know where to turn, I didn't have any solutions, and I got some really bad advice. And that was, I had to declare bankruptcy, and that's what I did. In my early 20s, I've been through bankruptcy. It's awful. I really wish I had today's sponsor, and that is PDS Debt, because they can help you avoid the unthinkable, which is going through bankruptcy. There's many forms of debt. You've got credit card debt, personal loans, medical bills, it can happen to us. We can lose our jobs. Hey, I've personally been there as well. It's good news. There's one solution, and that's pdsdebt.com slash dd. Go there right now, do the survey, and in most cases, they can help you out. You actually pay off your debt. They haven't got really bad advice. We're giving you really good advice. Go to pdsdebt.com slash dd right now. Fill out the questionnaire. If you have good credit, bad credit, it doesn't matter. There's options for you. Do it right now. Don't end up like me, you guys, but here's the bright side. If you do it and you go and you clear everything up, there's always a future. Even if I was in the complete slums and made all the wrong choices, look what I got. At the end of the day, I still have my dream cars, I have a flourishing business, and I got my credit back on track, and it feels amazing, and I got my confidence back. So anything's possible. I hope to see you guys debt-free. pdsdebt.com slash dd. These are, uh, I believe, the crank sensors. Right, Mike? Uh, cam. Oh, cam, or, yeah, I'm dumb. Cam <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there's actually four cam sensors, uh, one on each cam because they do have variable timing. So these will control where the cams sit so we can have the cams actually move while the engine is running to optimize the cam position for every point in the RPM and under load. You can actually make it spool up way faster on a turbo car. You can build way more power in the mid range and have a lot of power on the top end. Just really optimize the entire power band with the the, uh, adjustable cam timing. So yeah, something that I've used in my BMWs where a lot of people eliminate the Vanos is what it's called in the BMW systems. We picked up so much horsepower and so much torque in the mid range by keeping them. And uh, yeah, I don't see why anybody would ditch them. All right, so the engine is completely bolted in now. And uh, you know, I was thinking about putting the exhaust manifolds on right now, but I think I'm gonna hold off on that because when the wiring guy comes down, the more access he has to everything, the better. We know where the exhaust runs, so we've already planned out everything. And he's actually built probably more than 75% of the harness. So most of it will be completed. But what he needs to do is get it in the exact position and then we're gonna drill the holes in the firewall for the quick disconnect. So it's actually a mil spec uh, quarter turn plug that's gonna have all the wire. So we're gonna have a branch that comes through the center here that's gonna go to all the injectors, probably come up and go here. I'm not sure actually if he, if he has some running along top, but we did build heat shields to protect the electronics up here and the coil packs and all that from the exhaust. I think what we're gonna do now is put the shifter in, put the uh, shifter linkage, which actually has a sensor in the middle of it, and it's called a strain gauge. As you pull back on the shifter to shift up, it'll sense the pressure inside of there, and it's all completely adjustable. So when the tuner goes in to set everything up, he can look at how much force it takes to do those shifts, and he can set a window. Basically, if you pull harder than this, it'll cut the throttles, it'll cut the ignition, whatever whatever he wants to do to basically cut a bunch of power to get that shift done. So you don't ever have to lift off of the throttle to do upshifts. It's all flat shift, basically like a DCT transmission, except this is just a regular single clutch transmission. So super fast shifts. And then same thing on the downshifts. You get off the throttle, you jump on the brakes, you don't touch the clutch, you push the lever forward and it senses how much force is on the shifter and it blips for you. So it'll actually move the throttles, blip the, the RPM, match it, perfectly so you get those super clean, precise downshifts that you get with a sequential transmission. So uh, that's what we're gonna do now. So I wanna show you guys this before I bolt it in the car because it's a lot easier to see when it's out of the car. So here is our Samsonas shift lever. Right here we have stops with springs in them. So these are spring loaded and we can adjust these where this stops, that's all adjustable. And those need to be set because if you have too much travel in your shifter, you're actually putting a lot of strain on the inside of the transmission. There is a shaft that runs through it that clicks and goes through and it moves the forks that shift between the gears. So you don't wanna put any additional 
additional force. You just want them to move the amount they need to to select the next gear. So we'll have to set those stops once we get it in the car and I'll show you guys that process later when it is all bolted in. Here's the strain gauge. So this little sensor right here will read the force through these three wires. It is a five volt, it is a zero volt, which is basically a sensor ground, but it's not just a ground, it's read through the ECU, so it's 100% consistent. So you've got those going in, and then you have one wire that's sending the signal out. So it's five volts in, zero volts, and then as you do your shifts, it'll read three volts, three and a half volts, four volts, whatever it might read. It's reading all the way through that sweep, kind of like a potentiometer under load as a, a strain gauge. So I've already made this linkage. I'm gonna put a couple of jam nuts on here so that once we get in the car, we can adjust it properly, get that sitting exactly where it needs to be. No load on the uh, shift mechanism on the transmission. The lever has no load on it at all. Tighten them down and then we'll set the stops. Drops in right there and then we'll bolt it in from the bottom. And one thing I didn't talk about was this little guy right here. Once we get it all put together, we'll actually run a cable that's basically the same as a bicycle brake cable. That'll run through and you will have to pull this lever back to get it out of first gear to go into neutral. And then same thing to get it into reverse. You'll have to pull this lever and click it into reverse. So it's a reverse lockout and a neutral lockout. So when you're on track and you're banging down gears and you're going into a really slow corner, you can't accidentally pop it into neutral and just sit there in free rev. So it'll stop you from doing that. And then same thing, if you're sitting in the car and it's in neutral, you can't accidentally just bump it forward and uh, put it in reverse. So little safety lever. All right, so I got just a little bit of Loctite on these bolts just so they don't rattle loose and uh, we have a loose shifter, which is not ever good. And they're lined up. And then once I get all four in, uh, then I'll tighten these down and then I can install the linkage, which basically just goes from here to this uh, Heim joint on top of the transmission. So I gotta throw a lock nut on there and then I can get that linkage in place. Mike, what's this red thing? Uh, that is actually just a factory, like a tamper evident seal. Oh. So if you pulled the transmission apart, you know, took it apart or whatever, put it back together and it didn't work, you can't call them up and say, hey, you guys sent me a transmission that doesn't work. Obviously, it doesn't matter for us. We'll pull it apart and we'll do all the rebuilds ourselves here. This is the same transmission I had in quite a few of my drift cars. I know it really well. They're actually very, very strong, but everything breaks. So there is nothing that is completely 100% bulletproof. Everything needs maintenance maintenance, especially on a car like this. So we will be servicing it and pulling it apart and checking the wear, replacing parts as needed. So it looks like this clamp for the fuel line, this, this one got installed correctly, but that one got installed facing up. So the lines are actually touching the side of the transmission right now. So we're going to move that clamp and drop it back down. So the lines are not hitting the side, but they're actually below the transmission. And then the transmission is on solid mounts. The engine is on solid mounts. So we don't have to worry about it like jumping around and actually hitting anything, but we do need to have a little bit of air gap. So it just doesn't have that rubbing. All right, guys, the time has come. So Greg is here from GP Motorsports and he brought basically his entire mobile wiring department with him. So he can custom build this wire harness to fit the F12 exactly. It's kind of like if you get a custom suit made, you'll go in, you'll get measurements, and then the tailor will fit everything to your measurements, but they won't finish it. Once they are almost done, you'll come in, you'll put the suit on, and they'll finish every little cuff and last thing and get it to be perfect. And that's basically the stage that we're at right now. So we'll come over here and I'll kind of show you guys what he's already finished and what we have left to finish on the car. All right, so over here we have some of the harness that is about 95% completed. So he has everything run through the Raychem shrink tubing. And before all this started, every single wire was pinned out and figured out where it needs to go from this connector to that connector. And then from another connector through there that goes to the other side, where it ends up on the car or where it ends up on the ECU. So he literally has to map out every destination point and every break in between to make sure that that one wire makes its way through and does so correctly. The right size wire for the distance it needs to travel. You can't just say like, oh, I'm gonna run the, like this thin wire in the car for everything. It might work for sensors. It might work for some very low amperage stuff, but some things are gonna need a bigger wire to get the job done properly. Like you can't run a 20 gauge wire from the front of the car to the back of the car for the fuel pumps. 
You're gonna draw too many amps, you're gonna melt some wires, yeah, right? Catch on fire. Yeah, Greg is basically like the wiring mad scientist. He's done this many times on some really, really high-end cars. He did it on my F30 drift car um, and some other like very high-end competitive drift cars and salt flat cars and all kinds of stuff. Drag right? racing. Yeah, Lots some some serious big dollar builds that, that cannot have any room for error. I mean, there's about 30 grand worth of electronics in this car, and then the harness has to connect all of those things. So no matter how good your electronics are, your ECU, your sensors, whatever, if the wiring itself is not good, that's, you know, those are the nerves connecting everything. So all of this stuff is laid out over here. We've got connections here for a PDM, which is a power distribution module. And then we have the Motec M150 ECU. So all four of those connectors will go to the ECU. Those have already been completely finished up. The ECU and PDM will sit on the bottom side of the dash, basically by the passenger's footwell up high. Uh, so we'll make that panel. And I don't wanna make that panel yet because Greg took some measurements for the wiring. That way we can lay it in the car and see exactly where it wants to sit. And if the panel needs to move over five millimeters, 10 millimeters, whatever, I can do that and it can be perfect. So all of this is nearly done. We've got, this is a clutch pressure. So he's got these labels here that tell you exactly what it is. And it might look a little weird that there's wires sticking out of here, but that is just a trick that uh, Greg's learned from doing it over the years. So when he's ready and he finishes this wire, when he puts the terminals on the end and the connector, then he can actually pull these wires out and slide this right next to it and heat shrink it in place. So you have the connector with its label properly right next to it, rather than it being a foot or so downstream. And when you have everything zip tied up in the car and everything's nice and tidy, it's nice to see what it goes to right next to the connector, not 10 feet away. All of the detail they've gone through to get it to this point is uh, a lot, there's a lot of hours in it, no. a ton of hours, right? <laughs> Before you even pull a wire, it takes a lot of time of every pin has to go somewhere yep. through this. And yeah, it's a lot of calculation. If you spend the time on the back end, to figure everything out before you start. Well, you're gonna have a better harness in the end and you're not gonna have any errors. So every pin, there's literally, like what are these, 36 pin or something? 34 and 36. 26. Yeah, so every single one of those with all those wires going to it and where they lead to, going into these like mil spec, uh, quarter turn connectors. Hundreds every, of wires. Hundreds of <laughs> wires and lots of destinations where they all go to. And some of them might branch out and go into Y's and there's a lot going on. And actually you have a, another part of the harness isn't finished yet, so we can show you that. This is the engine loom. So basically this is the connector that's gonna go into the firewall. And on this side, it's going to go to the engine. And the reason that he's left everything open, they're all wired up. So every one of the sensors, wires are already grouped together. There are the bundles that are ready to go. But instead of finishing almost all of it on the bench, and bringing it over here and having connectors that are either too long or too short, basically not perfect, he'll do everything here on the car. So the majority of it is already The in hard work here. is done. Yep, so now it's, all right, this is where this going, trim it to length, put some heat shrink tubing over it, label it, connector it, and then uh, shrink the whole thing when it's actually done. This is a lot of work. I've built some very small harnesses before. I built one chassis harness before and I didn't ever want to do it again. <laughs> it's not what I specialize in. Yeah, it's, so, it's very time consuming. Yeah, but that's all you do. That is what you do and that's why he's so good at it. Um, and that's why we have him working on this car because like everything else in the build, we want perfection all the way across. And uh, this is just another component to the car that uh, is as good as you can possibly get. We're gonna let Greg get started because um, obviously there's still a lot to do. So he's got a few days of work to finish this all up. Once that's done, we can plug some electronics in, run some hoses that are already completed, put the intercooler in, put the seats in, put the new MoTeC dash in, which uh, we're gonna get very soon. It's pretty impressive. So I know you guys are gonna wanna see that. Tim is actually out right now picking up the carbon fiber drive shaft. So we'll be able to see that today. This thing will hopefully be running in the next two weeks, like fired up and uh, I'm fired up to hear it. So. I can't wait to hear this thing, it's gonna scream. All 
All right, so while Greg's working on that, I'm just gonna start assembling some of the other parts so that when all of the wiring is done, we can just get everything laid in there. Also, the intercooler does have two fans that are gonna be mounted to the front of it. So at some point, those are gonna need to be installed in the car so we can get the wiring done for that. This bracket is already done. We just got it back from the powder coater, so it will bolt on to the intercooler here. I'll get that on there. And then the oil cooler also bolts in between these brackets and the intercooler. I'll get that bolted up, just do as much prep as I can. The car will basically assemble itself in the end. It's gonna to come together really fast. So I'm getting every single thing that I can get assembled. That includes these little tabs here go onto the injectors, keep the injectors located in place. You guys remember in a stories video when I was putting this together, I did not realize that uh, Mad Sweden actually goes through the extra steps to machine all these extra holes and make these tabs to keep those injectors into the fuel rail. And honestly, I've seen a lot of aftermarket fuel rails, a lot of aftermarket manifolds, and I have never seen this before. So like I was saying with the Mad Sweden stuff, it is just beyond my expectations. The guys uh, do an absolutely amazing job over there. Now that I'm realizing all of these parts are here, I'm gonna bolt all of them on. And whoo! Dude, that thing is bad. This is the 100% custom carbon fiber drive shaft for the F12, made by our buddies at Driveshaft Pro. They built the drive shafts for my cars and they held up really well. Of course, we're gonna use them. They're local too. So they got this thing all built and dialed in. It's a pretty large diameter. And that is because the larger the diameter of the tube, the stronger it is. So you can actually run a thinner wall tubing with a larger diameter and have a lot more strength to it. So yeah, this thing is awesome. We've got the uh, hardened input shaft on the front, you can tell because of that coating. Some good U-joints, the little aluminum back section here. Now we'll pop this thing in the car and see how it looks. Can't wait to uh, put this thing in there. All right, so I got the runners all done. Um, the injectors are in now with those little uh, safety clips. Currently, the upper part of the manifold, the plenum, is just slapped together so we can do all the fab work. So I'm gonna take it apart now, I'm gonna clean everything, make sure it's spotless, and then we're gonna put the hardware in with the O-rings, so all of this is ready to go on the engine, and once it is on the engine, it's good to go. So I'll probably make a panel that bolts on. I can either make a panel that bolts on from those two lower ones on the roll cage there, that comes down, so it has like a little bit of an air gap, yeah. You can get the water temp sensor somewhere. I can hold it flat. We'll just stick it out. this long, and we should be good. Oh yeah. Right, we've got the two lines going here to the rails, the two lines coming around to the front of the rails. So that's all pretty busy. The valley is busy. Whenever you're ready to do that, we'll pop those on in two minutes. I'll make that back panel for the PDM right now. That'll probably take me 20, 20 minutes. And now that the car is up in the air, we are going to put the drive shaft in. The only thing that's missing, linking the engine and the transmission to the differential. We still have some spacer adapters that are actually being machined right now that should be done tomorrow and then they can ship them to us, but those are gonna adapt the OEM Ferrari axles to this quick change differential. So yeah, those will be here and we'll be able to put those in fairly soon too. But for now, let's get this drive shaft in there. Let's see if this one fits, I got some some extra strong oh, those are drive shaft straps that I haven't seen before. But yeah, they're chromoly with ARP studs and nuts on them. That's sick. So, I mean, it held 1100 horsepower in my drift car with just, with just the regular strap. But yeah, these things are just really cool. So I figured I'd buy these for this car. Cool. <laughs> they can't bend either. Yeah. So. Yeah, let's see if they fit though. Good. That was on, that was on that side, no problem. Now the other side. Now we have to somehow pull this back. Yeah, I'll grab the mallet and tap it forward once we get these in place. All right, that's looking good. 
All right, so here is the PDM. This is actually out of my car because the ones we bought for this car aren't here yet. They should be here tomorrow or the day after. But to get this going, we're gonna use these for mock-up. So it's pretty crazy that inside of here, this little tiny thing, all of the power goes through here and acts like a relay and fuse box and collects all the data so you can see how much power these certain items are drawing. So if you have fans that pull 60 amps, well, it's gonna show you how it pulls those amps. And if you get way out of range, you can set up warnings on the dash to basically tell you like fan failure, fuel pump failure, whatever you wanna do. It's pretty amazing that this replaces the entire fuse block that would normally be in a car. Uh, but I've gotta mount this over here. So before he can finalize all the wiring, we are going to make a mount for this right around here. So I am going to use these two points off of the roll cage and just build a plate to mount that right there. Instead of mounting this directly to the chassis back here somewhere where um, these things are very vibration resistant, um, but being on that panel, uh, it'll set it off a little bit to give it some heat soak properties, which like I said, these things are tough and I haven't seen them overheat, but anything we can do to make it better, we will do. So I'm gonna draw this part up right now and uh, cut it out in the plasma and uh, make it bolt it in and then he can finish all the wiring and have it be spot on. I'm gonna put some nut certs in here, pop those in that panel, and then instead of having to worry about putting a bolt through and getting to a nut on the backside, we'll have these basically, the nuts in there, so we can just put the fasteners in from the front just to keep it simple. All right, there we go. So we've got the rear PDM mounted over here, so uh, Greg can continue wiring all of the stuff in the rear. Basically what I'm gonna work on next is making a similar mount that's gonna go on the dash bar where we can mount the ECU and PDM. They're gonna sit up here around there. I'll pull that PDM off at some point and uh, draw this up and be able to make a bracket for that. That'll hold everything in place and then we can finalize all the rest of the wiring up front. We will drill a hole in the firewall somewhere in this area, they've already actually Got a little pilot hole marked out here. So we're gonna have the uh, bulkhead connector in that spot. That's far away from the exhaust. It's really easy to access. So if we do have to pull the engine out for whatever reason or pull the wiring harness off, it's gonna be easy to get to. Yeah, so basically over the next probably two days, this is what we're gonna be doing. Making little brackets, bolting down stuff, installing ground cables and power cables through the whole thing, putting some uh, studs in the firewall uh, for the power and ground cables to pass through, or power most likely, grounds if we also need them. And uh, that's it. So I think the next time you guys see this car, the wiring will be pretty much completed. We'll have the ECUs in place, and we should have the MoTeC uh, display dash also mounted up. Possibly even have the seats in this thing. It's gonna be really close to starting up. Obviously, all the stuff that's going on in the background right now and for the next two days will be on the stories channel so make sure you guys check that out if you want to see more detail of all the detail because there are a lot of little things that are going to happen all of the trimming of the wires using the correct tools to crimp terminals on uh, heat shrink tubing just all the little stuff so that'll all be on stories obviously and uh, thank you guys again for watching this thing will be running very soon if we don't have any issues. And right now, it's looking like things are going along really smooth. So uh, stay tuned, guys. I cannot wait to fire this thing up.